contentment. I am pleased to inaugurate this conference of jurists of in, on international terrorism and human rights. You have a packed schedule of wide-ranging deliberations on key issues that impact critically on our daily lives. I commend this distinguished audience of jurists, academics, and legal experts who have gathered here today to discuss these themes. It is also topical to discuss human rights, yesterday being the Human Rights Day. It was on this day in 1948 that the UN General Assembly adopted and proclaimed the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. It remains the universal and fundamental recognition of the fact that the inherent dignity and the equality of inalienable rights of all members of the human family are the foundation of freedom, justice and peace in the world. It is also appropriate that this year, the Human Rights Day is dedicated to the human rights defenders who play a vital role in protecting human rights of others facing personal risks to them and their families. It is perhaps a statement of our times that all nations and people have been affected by the global menace of terrorism. It is not only an insult, an it is not only an assault on human decency and a negation of fundamental human rights, but also knows no boundaries and poses serious threats to human rights. Terrorism has also come to represent a threat to international peace and security, especially when terrorists are armed, financed and backed directly or indirectly by governments or their agencies. International terrorism is an international crime threatening the integrity and the political and social fabric of states. Its sinister element is vastly magnified in its impact when it is enmeshed with drug trafficking, arms proliferation, international financial crimes, and generic forms of extremism, fundamentalism, separatism, and intolerance. Our globalized world is characterized by enhanced levels of resort to violence by state and non-state actors within and across borders. Global threats to peace and security necessitate coordinated and global responses. We therefore believe that the adoption of a comprehensive convention against international terrorism would provide a solid legal basis for the fight against terrorism. However, we must also note that legal systems in many countries have resorted to doctrines of necessity to incorporate exceptional and extraordinary legislation to deal with this surge of violence. The challenge for governments and legal systems is to deal effectively with violence within the framework of normal laws and respect for human rights and fundamental freedoms. Ladies and gentlemen, there is one other important aspect relating to the subject matter of this conference. The enjoyment of human rights is closely related to the prevalence of good governance norms. In India, we remain committed to democratic gov governance, inclusive development, and the implementation of the rule of law. This commitment has been challenged in practice by departures from 
good governance manifest through corruption and the deleterious influence of money power. Corruption has inhib inhibited the enjoyment of human rights, has contributed to inequalities in income, status and opportunities, and thus thwarted human development of our citizens. We must recognize that good governance without any trace of corruption is also a human right. Friends, human rights today are increasingly discussed in the context of violence, use of force, and terrorism. The idea that the central objective of human rights is to empower people through human development does not find adequate mention in contemporary debates. It is only when the capacities of citizens are fully developed, their choices widened, and freedoms expanded that human rights would have achieved their objective. I thank the organizers of this conference for inviting me to this function, and I wish you all success in your deliberations. Jai Hind. We thank you, sir, for the successful initiation of this program, so essential for our nation's health. A heartfelt gratitude for the eloquent address and guidance. Honorable Vice President had to leave due to some urgency. May I request Professor Shimon Shatrit, Professor International and Public Law, Hebrew University of Jerusalem, to grace the dais, please. May I also request Mr. Raghunath Kesavan, President, Malaysian Bar Council, also to come to the dais. I also request His Lordship Justice Dilip R. Deshmukh, Chairperson, Company Law Board, to come to the dais. And I also request Mr. Vivek Tankha, the additional Solicitor General of India, to please grace the dais. Vice Chairman, All India Bar Association and Tamil Nadu Advocates Association to say a few words, please. Honorable Vice President of India, Dr. Justice K.G. Balakrishnan, Chairman, National Human Rights Commission of India, Honorable Mr. Justice V.S. Sipuka, my esteemed friend, Mr. Odishi Agarwala, respected Mr. Justice Mark Porter, and Mr. James Orr Mansion, respected Mr. C.L. Rula, the respected uh, dignities of the Reyes, uh, ladies and gentlemen. We all have assembled here to participate in the international conference of Jewish on International Terrorism, organized by the International Council of Jewish, National Human Rights Commission of India, All India Bar Association, and the Indian Council of Jewish. We all have know about the terrorism, strikes at the root of the country's unity and integrity of every nation. It cuts across the territorial barriers and every country and in India in particular is a victim of terrorism. Only two days back, we all witnessed a terrorist attack at Varanasi where 18 months old child lost its life. Therefore, and root effort is needed 
to tackle the maniac of terrorism, people don't expect mere words from the government. They want concrete action so that the terrorist activities are nipped in the bud and common man is saved from fear of terrorism. The International Council of Jurists and the National Human Rights Commission of India, All India Bar Association, Indian Council of Jurists have been playing a yeoman in the cause of protecting the human rights of citizens. The conference will throw light on the various dimensions of terrorism and will make an attempt to evolve a strategy and solutions for the government to deal with this problem more effectively. I hope the participants with the, the vast experience and knowledge will throw light on the different aspects of terrorism and NATO of this conference the grand success. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. It is said, accomplishments are easiest when we work the hardest, and it is hardest when we work the easiest. We now begin with felicitating all such accomplished persons by presenting the International Jurists Award 2010. As per the decision of the jury, International Jurists Award 2010 is being presented to the following dignitaries. I firstly call upon Sir James R. Mancham, the founding president of Republic of Seychelles, to please come on the dais. This award is being presented to him in recognition of the pivotal role played by him in promoting peaceful settlement of international disputes. He is a visionary statesman who has influenced many world leaders with his contemporary philosophy and outlook. The International Jurists Award 2010 also goes to <laughs> Honorable Lord Igor Judge, Lord Chief Justice of England and Wales. May I request Honorable Sir Mark Howard Potter, Head of Family Justice for England and Wales, to receive the award on behalf of Chief Justice of England and Wales. <laughs> this award is being presented to Lord Igor Judge for his outstanding contribution to fair and efficient administration of justice during his distinguished judicial tenure. He has made a lifelong contribution to the cause of justice. The International Jurists Award 2010 is also being presented to Mr. Raghunath Kesavan, President, Malaysian Bar Council. This award is being presented to him for his enormous service to the bar and his deep involvement and conscientious engagement in the maintenance of the highest standards of professional ethics. He has canvassed for change and for clear articulation of the principles and strategic directions necessary for the legal profession to thrive. The International Jurists Award 2010 also goes to Mauritius Bar Association. Mr. Rishi Pursem, Senior Advocate, will be receiving the award on behalf of the Mauritius Bar Association. This is for the recognition of pivotal role played in the affairs of the legal fraternity throughout the world. The association has consistently displayed a high degree of professionalism and effectiveness in protecting the interests of the bar.